What's going on, everyone? I'm Steve from Burke Family 54 Comics, joined by my good friend Dave from Mark Spector Comics. What's up, Dave? What's going on? What's going on, Steve? Thanks for having me on for this uh, awesome topic that, you know, has been quoting a lot of the uh, community's eyes the last about a month or so. Absolutely, absolutely. This is kind of like an impromptu live that I hope a lot of people watch on the replay. Um, this is... We're going to talk about the CGC scandal, CGC overall, whether you guys should be trusting them right now or not. We have some uh, different takes on this. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Um, so this is a topic that I have really not like delved into that much. There's been a lot of people posting about this over the last like couple weeks. Um, yeah. Lots of videos being made, people doing it for different reasons <laughs> clicks i feel like is a lot of it um but yesterday there was i think it was actually maybe a day and a half ago there was an interview posted by west coast dave Inger, um with uh, the head grader uh, matt nelson at cgc and uh, i listened to the whole thing yesterday um i thought it was a really good interview and i felt like you know it kind of inspired me to um come on here and talk a little bit about it uh, I think Dave has got some maybe internet issues. I don't know. Um, so I decided, you know what, let's go ahead and let's just, I was going to make a video on this actually. I reached out to Dave and I was like, hey, you know, what do you think about my list here? And he's like, you know, I'd love to talk about this. I'm like, okay, let's just go live and talk about this. So Dave, I've been talking quite a bit about this um, CDC stuff here with Matt Nelson's interview. You just got done listening to it. I, don't, I wanted to get your initial thoughts on uh, Matt Nelson's interview over on the West Coast Dave Vingers YouTube channel. Yeah, so um, for you guys who are not aware, Matt Nelson is the uh, president of CGC. Um, he's been the president, I think, for probably a few years now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, I was honestly surprised that uh, somebody from the uh, YouTube community was able to get him on in an interview, especially talking about the uh, ongoing investigation. Uh, He's not somebody you often see in the public figure, especially, you know, for a big corporation like that. You, you, you could probably attest to this, Steve, how many times you've seen Matt Nelson interview. Um, I think the last time I remember seeing him was probably on Reggie Collect's channel, probably a few years ago. That's how far back with um, with him and uh, I forget her name, Brittany. When she's now the head of the Signature Series uh, portion of CGC. But that was probably the last time. I'm sure he probably has. But uh, you yeah, know, I, I was I kind of forgot that she that he was on there. Now that you say that, yeah, yeah it was like four it was five, a while, maybe even six yeah, years ago, dude. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you you were right about that for sure. So uh, first off, props to uh, West Coast Avengers and Nine Nine Newsstand for uh, obviously reaching out to uh, CGC and, and getting Matt Nelson on. So I definitely congratulate them to get them on there. It was awesome. Um, I listened to the. Uh, the interview last night on my way home from work, and then I closely uh, re-listened to it again just an hour ago uh, when we were talking, just to take down some notes because I was, like you said, I was planning on making a video. Uh, my reaction to the whole thoughts on it, and uh, it was just under an hour. And um, I thought overall it was pretty good. Um, they did ask some uh, uh, some important questions. Um, obviously, I was hoping that they would get some heavy hitter questions on there, but obviously you can't expect to get everything answered going into this interview, knowing that uh, if you ask something maybe a little controversial or, uh, or uh, I don't know, whatever it may be, it could be pretty off-putting. And then, you know, he can say, like, we're all set. I'm all, all done with the interview. You know, I'm not going to answer anything else. So uh, you definitely have to be a little cautious going into an interview, something like that, especially when you don't have a, a rapport with a person. You know, you're just... Just like if you were, you know, a news reporter and you're interviewing a big politician, you can't, you ask them something pretty offensive, they just may, you know, leave, you know. So, uh, you know, I um, applaud them for some of the questions. We can delve more into the specifics of the questions and uh, and obviously the ongoing investigation. So that's uh, my quick early thoughts on the, uh, the interview. Yeah, so... I appreciate you, Dave, for saying all that. Like you said, like th they did ask some, you know, difficult questions, and and I did feel like Matt kind of sidestepped some um, yeah. because legally he had to for some of them.
but I do feel like he was pretty forthcoming on some other topics as well. And there was actually some things that came out that I was actually surprised to see in that interview, like for them to talk about that maybe in the future there could be a 9.9 pre-screen. That was... Yeah, we can talk about that. We'll talk about that. That was quite interesting to hear. And for him to yeah. also say there's probably some 9.8s out there that could be a 9.9 was also really interesting to hear. You know what I mean? Because that tells me that there are some, you know... Uh, differences on obvious we all know this already there's differences on opinion and opinion on 9.8 versus 9.9 and they talked about how like you could have a tick on a 9.9 which i was shocked to hear because oh. we felt like a 9.9 um, was like, almost perfect you know what i mean yeah i'm glad we uh you pinpointed that specific statement that matt nelson we can talk about that after if you want Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. About the 9.9 portion we can because that was like that was the actually what i was yeah, the, from the yeah. whole interview, that was the actual breaking news that I was kind of like, wow, that they actually dropped that. They're, you know, seriously thinking about doing a 9.9 pre-screen. But we can talk about that after. Sure. Okay. So, um, basically, there's a lot of things that I want to, I, I to touch on. Uh, they mostly touched on the scandal, which I'm going to try to break it down as best as possible. And I'll have Dave sure. here add in anything else that I'm missing. Essentially, 9.9 .9 newsstand and West Coast Avengers um basically broke like the news within the last month or so i think it's been a couple yeah. weeks now basically that there has been uh, an individual uh because matt nelson confirmed that it is one individual um that is not multiple to his you know knowledge he also said that no one at cgc is involved uh which is good to hear um, yeah, hopefully that's true. I, I assume it's true if he said that. Um, they're pretty, you know, straightforward on a lot of this stuff, and I'll talk about more of that later. Essentially, there was a guy that was he would buy two copies of a book. He buy nine point eight, and then like a nine two nine oh eight five maybe, and he would open the case of the nine point eight, and he'd put in the nine point oh or whatever lower grade copy, and he would resubmit it for a reholder and then he would submit his 9.8 copy back in to get a 9.8 so now he went from a 9.0 and a 9.8 to two 9.8s by spending you know 80 percent less than he should have and then he was yeah. using that to sell to others um and essentially um there was i think the the way they figured it out was like there was a book that was a 9.8. And if you looked at the book, it did not look like a 9.8. Um, yeah. Then you could look at the certification and figure it out that this is, you know, not right. And then they, what, what I think they even looked at like the eBay sales for this person uh, and figured out that this was, you know, uh, a constant theme. Uh, and then within, I don't know, a week or two, like CGC put out not just a statement, they put out a whole list already that they had dug deep. Um, and they said they had several meetings about it. It's been very stressful at CDC. Um, a list of books that were impacted. Now, they're asking people with these books to send them to CDC for them to either authenticate mm -hmm. and send back to you. Or if it is a book that you bought, let's say you bought a 9.8 Spider-Man 300, which was by far the most on the entire list, they would yeah. compensate you for that specific book and when i was looking at the list it was all marvel like i don't know if you noticed that just I about see, i didn't just see any, i didn't see any dc on that entire list two, two uh, books okay so there you go and, and there was what 300 yeah. on the list so yeah, 350 uh, um sorry to interrupt uh 350 books um uh, i want to say maybe 98 percent were marvel um there was uh a tmnt number one on the list along with another indie book i can't think of and um maybe i think two or three dc books one was the um that famous adam uh adam hughes uh black cat cover yeah was it like catwoman 51 or something like that yep that was signed by him mm -hmm. so that was potentially a forged signature who knows i don't know what the there book was, was also like. a it was a superman book there was also a uh AF15 signed by Stan. On we'll, talk about, we'll and, talk about that. 
<laughs> and before we get any further, and I'll, I'll jump back to you if I miss anything. Obviously, this is not the first time CGC's had any scandals. We had the C2E2 nope. whole thing yep. with the UF4s, with the uh, acetate, the acetate colors, gate. Acetate <laughs> gate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now we uh, and, we, and we got, yeah, we had acetate gate, and now I'm declaring this one a slap gate. <laughs> Obviously, I got like, this slap gate. Yep. MJ Comics <laughs> is MJ Comics has gotten a bunch of books um, uh, from CDC that were the the books were in the wrong cases. Like all the books were right. Yeah. In the cases yeah. were right, but they were not in the right cases, and this has happened before. Books were backwards, upside yeah. down. Terrible quality books. control. Uh, yeah. Terrible quality control. Price hikes. On, yeah, price hikes on top of this. Multiple it. price hikes on top of all of this. Um, yeah. and, uh, and there's another thing, and I want to touch on it really quick, and I'll throw it back to you because I feel like I've been talking forever. Um, another thing yeah, is like, CGC's had books where they, um, they, they encase it, they send it back to you, and the book moves around. And that happened to me personally. I had a book, and this is the book I'm going to show it off right now. Uh, I'll, I'm going to actually make myself a little bit Oh, better. nice. Uh, my TNT won. When I submitted it to CGC at the con, I got it signed and graded. Uh, came back in 8.5. But when it came back, it took me like a month to figure out that it was moving inside the case. Like the yeah. NOL was messed up, and it happened to Sticky Goose as well on like I think a 9.6 or a 9.8 copy of ASM 300 and uh, to CGC's credit, uh, they were they fixed my book for free. They had Sticky Goose submit his 9.6 ASM 300 mm -hmm. back to uh, back to them, and they just rebought him a different copy for free. And so they have done a lot of things that people would not agree with, but they also, and sometimes like they fix a lot of their issues. I don't. Know. Dave, I've been talking a lot. I want to hear your your, your thoughts on the scan or on? anything else. Uh, what's up, Alex? I just he was asking a question about what's in the glass. I'm actually drinking uh, a little Scottish style ale. Uh, it's going to be on my upcoming uh, beer of the month video, which I like to make. So I'll uh, look for that as well. So shout out to, to Alex from Comic yeah. Addicts. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I can attest to the um, the magazine style cases. I do have a uh, Golden Age Wonder Woman book, and they actually encase that in a magazine case, which I, I can't stand because <laughs> um, obviously it's a slightly oversized Golden Age book, not your traditional Golden size Golden Age size book. So they put it in there, and it, it shifts. It shifts in the case. It, it, and, is this uh, is this one of the newer cases? Because this is a newer no, case. Okay, it's it not a newer one. case. I'm okay. assuming it's an older one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, that's full. um, so yeah, uh, what were we talking about specifically on we're the, we're talking um, about the slab gate that, that yes, you oh, yeah, slab gate. So, um, I, I think by now everyone in the community who's wanted to hear about what's been going on is pretty well informed, um, on what's been, you know, going on with, the the switcheroo with the cases and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, I think, kind of want to talk more about specifically about the interview that happened uh, two days ago on um, on uh, West Coast Dave Enders, uh channel uh, featuring uh, Nine Point Nine Newsstand in there as well because uh, they were they were like you said they were the two people that were breaking the uh, the news on the information and that goes back to whether or not uh, Matt Nelson and his other executives and, and uh, workers at uh, CGC even knew about it before they even broke news. Uh, that was, like that was one did, of the they did not yeah no from idea. the interview. They had no idea. So uh, props to everyone in the community who's been doing a lot of the backbreaking research, um, finding these books in question that were tampered with, and, and you know, in fact, that they were actually tampered with. And um, what they were saying that it was believed to be just one individual, uh, as far as they're concerned, from their early investigative research that uh, tampered the books. You know, and uh, we all know who I think. Most of us know who the individual is by eBay name and or, uh, you know, but, you know, I still kind of find it hard to believe that it's only been this one individual um, that's been doing this. I think they found books going back to at least 10 years that this is this has been an ongoing issue because I, I do you frankly believe that somebody's been submitting ten years? books. Did you yeah. say 10 years? Oh my 10 years. God, it, it, this couldn't this couldn't have been done in one year. 
let's be let's be realistic here. Sure. That you're going. This is a pretty in, you know invasive backbreaking project that you're doing. Takes time. Takes time to purchase these books. It takes time to you know find some of these books. Some of these books are quite rare. Um, takes a lot of capital to uh, to buy some of these books. Even though yeah you're buying them at a lower grade. You still have to, you know, do a lot of work, find the book, find the actual 9-8, take the book out, swap it over for another one, you know, and so forth. So this this is not something that's been done overnight. It, it's, this is from what many people believe to be at least a decade's worth of, of work. And that's why I think it's, you know, I, it's kind of mind boggling that CGC has been saying that this has just been one individual. When um, a lot of people in, in the... Uh, in the community have been finding out that, you know, from messaging other people that they bought books from an associate from this person who had been selling it at shows in the New York region. So this person's from New York. Um, okay. And uh, as it was said in the eBay page, that they were from the New York state. So they were selling it at some local shows in New York. And it was even reported by Thorough that, a comic book shop in New York City was also involved by the name really? of comic book by the name of comic book station, and there's receipts behind this as well. Uh, okay, this so see, I, I'm really, I'm I find really this really here. really hard to believe that CGC, with the amount of information that they have at their disposal, that uh, and they've also have a private investigative group that is a rather well known private investigative group that they that mentioned. was another interesting. You know, they, they went outside to hire. They, yeah, they had to. They had and, to. And what, what is it? Blackstone that's own that owns them now. Or Black, whatever? Blackstone is the is the parent company that that bought them yeah. out. So they and, they, uh, they don't play. They, they are no, no, money, no, no, no. And they are going to. They, make, <laughs> they, they said in the interview, like they're going to prosecute this person to the fullest. Extent. Oh yeah. There's going to be lawyers involved. Like CGC wants to clear oh, yeah. their name, and. So far, I'm I'm pretty impressed with everything that they've been yeah. doing. So, go on, sorry. Yeah, so Blackstone, like you said, don't play. They're a multi, multi, uh, I believe they own trillion dollars, over trillion dollars worth of assets across a multitude of sectors. They, uh, they're, you know, they're all over the place, you know. So uh, when you have somebody like CGC as one of their babies, they're going to protect them to the extent. Right. You know, so... Um, I was, uh, when I heard that the uh, investigative firm was called Kroll, I'm pretty well aware of the company. They're uh, an investment uh, firm as well, investigative firm out of New York City. And uh, I did a little bit of research on the company. And uh, from what I gathered, um, uh, the company provides investigative intelligence and security services. The company also offers risk mitigation services including forensic accounting, valuation litigation consulting, electronic evidence, and data recovery, business intelligence, and investigations. They also are unmatched in capabilities in identifying and investigative issues relating to fraud, corruption, money laundering, and embezzlement, help organizations identify wrongdoings, recover assets, and seek legal remedies anywhere worldwide. Wow. So they don't play. They don't play. Um, so, you know, something that probably no one has talked about yet is that company and their, you know, and what they can provide. So, uh, when Matt Nelson said that they're prepared to do, to, uh, prosecute to the fullest extent of the law, best believe that they will. Oh, or any 100%. people who have been denying. A lot of people would say, no, no, they're not going to do anything. They will. They will. They're gathering right. their information. If I'm this person after, I, I guarantee that person that did this. Guarantee they watch that in interview by now. One hundred percent, they've watched the interview. If I'm them, like I'm not giving anyone legal advice whatsoever. <laughs> I assume yeah. this person is is trying to get rid of as much stuff and leave the country. I would assume that's what they're probably going to do. <laughs> yeah, because the, uh, the from the list, and we can talk about that list. We're yeah. talking about assets well over in the million dollar range. Yeah. So I I had the list pulled up here. Um, okay. Okay. Hunting Comics, they can go after this guy as hard as they want. He's still just one actor. We need confirmation that CDC slabs can't be tampered with without leaving evidence, and no one is able to guarantee that. That is, you know, that would probably be the defense that this person would yep. use. Um, but I would assume that CDC, if they are going to go after a guy, 
and they're using this company that you talked about. Uh, there's yeah, gonna be plenty, yep. plenty of evidence. There's uh, plenty of evidence. Plenty of evidence. Plenty of evidence. Of evidence. I, yeah. I, still don't, yeah. I, I don't. I don't know the name of the the, the seller that you you've been talking about. Um, uh, so he goes. <laughs> the seller went by uh, several names. Okay. All right. So um, you can still look up. You could probably still look up the sales under that, and the, you know, if you look up the specific book in the sales, because it's you look up like for example uh, a nine eight. Uh, what is it? Black Cat Mark Jewelers. There's not going to be many of them on eBay. You can find the you All can right. find the sale, and then and then you can find the seller associated with the sale. And, what, what, what is that? Ninety Spider Man ninety four. Uh, one ninety four. I think it's the first Black Cat. One ninety four. Mark Mark Jewelers. I'm gonna look it up right now. Yeah. So there's um. Uh, so one of the names they went by is um, Comic Selects. Um, okay. And this is like um, I'm not obviously going to get in trouble by naming names. This is all well known. This has all been repeated by many people. Sure, they, they're not going to they're not going to do anything uh, to somebody like me. Um, Comic Selects was one of the names. I believe Briva Three was also another name associated with the seller. Uh -huh. um, and I believe there was also one more name, but I cannot recall the third name. Okay. Uh, let me know if you're able to to pull up the. Uh, uh, I'm looking right now. The, some of the sales or because uh, they should still be up there unless eBay pulled them. There's but, Sim um, it's not Simperfy, is it? I don't think um, that, I don't believe that's it because that person I, I know who that is. Let me take a look. So the highest one here is uh, a 9.8 from October. Uh, okay. For 3200 from Simperfy, but I believe that is. That, that cannot be him because that person I I've no seen him, I've seen him on on uh, Instagram and I know that person's a good dude so let me see I'll I'll just read off the names if you want me to I don't know if you can see them. um I, no I can I can see them but those don't those don't uh, unless I pulled it it's possible um the other thing we can always look at is the uh, is the Amazing Spider Man um uh. Was it what issue was that? The also uh, Mark Jewelers variant that was on the list. The black the uh, the black suit issue one fifty two. Is that the issue? I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna pull up the uh, list from CGC and then we can go back to eBay. How about that? Yeah, that works. Okay. Let me see if I can pull it up because I wonder if they scrub those those sales now. They might have, dude. Honestly. Okay. Here we go. Oh yeah, Adventures of Superman six twenty five. Oh, there you go. There's your there's your first there, DC. There's, book. A, there's a DC book. <laughs> like you said, there's, a, there's only a handful on such the a, a, a random book too. So okay, very next book, the second book on the list. I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Yep, this was the uh, this was the one book that gave me the the big red flag was this book that there was something there was something really really strange going on is this uh amazing fantasy 15 signed by stan lee written 86 on the first page <laughs> yes. and it came back as a signature series how does so, that happen? Uh, how does that so, happen so i believe the book is also signed on the back cover if i'm not mistaken you could look you'd have to look up the uh the image of the book if you could do that let me see if i can um, you keep talking because I believe I believe they took pictures of some of these books, um, and they might be in the database. Um, but uh, that, uh, uh, but uh, what do you call it? So it's strange. Assuming that it says Stanley in '86, it's it's signed in 1986. Would you assume that, uh, Steve? Uh, yes, I, that's what I would assume, right? Right, and uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, uh, CGC wasn't a company until what 2000. Yeah. So how does how does that happen? Because they've always said they right. do not verify anything they, unless exactly. they are there for it, right? Yeah. So. Uh, but so how did, that was so how did they how is that a signature series then? Yeah, right? and unless they unless they only verify the signature in the back cover. 
because I believe it was signed twice. So I'm trying to look up that number. And, and Does I it not cannot, show up? I cannot get it to show up. I, oh, wonder, strange. If it, I wonder if it's been pulled. Because uh, he talked about that, specifically that book. They asked that question during the uh, the interview about the so, AM15. And, and why does this one have a, a mark through it? So the books that have marked through it, that have already been received by CGC. There's okay. a disclaimer at the bottom of the list. Okay. And, uh, and from what he said in the interview, this Amazing Spider-Man 1 at an 8.0 signed by Stan Lee was confirmed not to be tampered. Okay, so the 6.5 is the one that is under question here. Yes, because they still have not received it. So any of the books that have crossed out serial numbers, they have already received, and they have already evaluated. Whether or not it's been tampered with, we don't know. Okay. It, it just shows off as a crossed label because they have received it in-house. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So uh, I believe that book was sent right to them as soon as they found out that the news was you know, broke about the uh, CGC scandal. Otaku tour guide OTG says this is not an isolated incident. Scammers have been milking the CDC process for years. Yeah. You know, it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the person that is behind this, that CDC says is behind it, um, you know, told friends about it and they were also doing it. You know, uh, it's gonna be hard for them to uncover all of it, honestly, for sure. Right, right. Mark's here. Mark is here. What's up, dude? It says Stanley eighty six written, not signed must be a qualified yellow label meaning it has to have a second signature that was witnessed the 86 right considered the signature that exactly yeah so i like i said i believe the back cover was also signed by stan lee okay. and uh but we, we can't look up the serial I, we just i guess we're having issues uh looking up the serial number but uh i'm, but I'm having so we, serious issues looking it up <laughs> which is fine um so he was saying in the interview he is you know, hopeful that this book has also not been tampered with. If it is, obviously, this would bring bring a big issue. Um, right. Having a book of, of that, you know, that price and quality uh, being tampered with, because that that would be, that is the most expensive book on the list by far. Yes, that's what wow. I thought too. So I'm trying to see if I can find that ASM 252 Mark Jewelers on the list. So as we go on here, I'm just going to read off as you're looking up here. I mean, there's an ASM-2, very high grade, yeah. 7.5, several ASM-3s, an ASM-5, 13. Oh, I just confirmed one of the sales. Okay, so this, there is still a sale on eBay. Okay, so look up, uh, do you have it on your computer? Because then I can have you share No, I have it on my phone, but you can quickly look it up if you go on eBay. Do you want to send me the link in Instagram and I'll pull it up? and, and uh, Yeah, yeah I can do that. We appreciate everyone for watching. Um, this is kind of an impromptu thing. Dave and I were talking about. I was gonna make a video. He's like, "Hey, I'm gonna make a video." I'm like, "Okay, well, let's let's just go live here, and discuss this." Yeah. I do want to ask you because the title of this video is "Should You Really Trust CGC Comics?" My thoughts are. I just. I am, just sent it to you. Okay. My thoughts are that uh, as I pull this up. Everyone knows, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, I'm a CGC stan. Almost all my books are CGC books. Um, my personal opinion, obviously, any company, any school, any business, there's going to be issues, right? Um, and, oh, yeah, here we go. Okay. Um, I personally believe this despite the issues and there's been several i mentioned a bunch earlier i still personally trust cdc um with my books um because they've been so transparent about everything uh, because i feel like they always try to do the right thing like they like i said i talked about like they they fix this book uh for free they fix a bunch of other mm -hmm. uh, other of my books for free feels like they're trying to do the right thing here uh legally um, they fixed a bunch of other books for free for other people like sticky goose uh, They ended up despite the first couple of things that they announced they ended up finally doing the right thing with acetate gate um, <laughs> Depending on whether or not you agreed with how many times it took them to do that eventually they did um, And you know, I, I do feel everyone should be given a second chance and I I just feel 
that especially after watching and listening to that interview by Matt Nelson, he's a real genuine guy. Um, and I feel like even better about CDC after listening to the interview. Like I already felt that way before listening to that. Obviously it's a big scandal. Um, and we'll, uh, we're going to pull up one of the books right now that you were able to find. This is an ASM 252 uh, Mark Jewelers with the label here being sold by Comic Selects. 286, 95.4% positive uh, sellers here. Um, what can you tell us about this book, Dave? So uh, this was actually one of the books that were early on in question of being tampered with. Um, this, along with the, uh, there was a Hulk 181. Um, but I believe it was this book and the uh, 181 that was uh, two of the books early on that, you know, that people found that seemed to be tampered with. Um, obviously, uh, this is a very pricey book. And, uh, you know, the, the thought process was is obviously that you're looking at it, you can see it's not, doesn't appear to be a 9.8. Um, I'm trying to see. I mean, I see a couple of ticks. It's not horrible. Let me see the no. back. Let me see the back. So why do people think this was one of the ones they tampered with? Just because they were able to tell by looking at it? Or, or what? what, what yeah, they, they, they were, well, they, 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 I believe it was the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the, the serial number that was attached to this book. Mm, that was a big thing in, in, in this case. And right? uh, yeah, the serial number attached to this book. And then I believe they were able to look back in recent sales. I think you, I believe you have up to three months or so on eBay before the sales. You can't go back, I believe, past that. Um, and they were able to match that serial number with a different book. And uh, I think that's when it started raising red flags. Okay, so basically they're able to look at a book and see, okay, this is a different book entirely. You can tell this one has ticks in certain areas. And, and it's not yeah, this over book there. in particular has a certain manufacturing defect where some of the books on the top have a slightly different shade in the, that dark reddish purple hue. Right here over here in the corners probably? Here, yep, here. And then that, exactly. Some covers okay. are a little bit lighter. Some are darker. And the book that they okay. pinpointed with was lighter as well. So we're not talking about a wow, defect so as well. We're also talking went, about... They went yeah. Woodward and Bernstein here, dude. <laughs> they, well, like they I said, I, I, I uh, obviously give a lot of props to all these people who have been doing all this back-breaking work, you know, For finding, sure. you know, these, uh, these books. But uh, this was one of the earlier examples that people started finding out was with the, uh, the Mark Jewelers. And uh, like I said, you, you pinpointed that name, Comic Selects. You notice that their feedback rating is now uh, 95 point something percent. It was much higher up until recently. Yeah, let me look at because this. Of, because of the uh, negative feedbacks. And uh, if, you go to, if you go to their page, their store is blank. Because yes. eBay has pull, pulled off all of their uh, listings. And this was actually one of their last sales on eBay before they got pulled. If you look at the sale, it, I believe it was in December. Okay. So, right. uh, but, I, can't, um, I can't click on their negative feedback. Normally, you can click you, on the feedback and it'll show you. You see, you see how you're on their feedback profile, and now it says Briva 3. You're right. So, that was one of their other names that they went by. So, Comic uh, Selects and Briva 3. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, like I showed earlier, um, none of those people that were showing on like that ASM 194 were a part of this. So please don't take anything negative from that. We were just right, looking, right, right. We, we were trying to look up who it was, and so we apologize if, if you know anything was shown that there was any confusion on that. Yeah, any, any confusion. Obviously, it is Comic Selects, Briva Three, and any anyone else. So, well, that is that is quite interesting. That um, and. And you were able to figure that out um, from what nine point nine newsstand and West Coast Day Avengers yeah. was reporting on their YouTube and on Instagram. They, yeah, they were reporting. Instagram, it, I feel like, uh, was probably the bigger one because I feel like a lot of people go on there to post books and look at things. I feel like the Instagram was probably the bigger 
of all of that, but YouTube, obviously you can share that anywhere as well. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't take any credit for investigating any of this. All this was information I gathered from uh, Ryan from automatic comics, from Swaggle house, from thorough. They're the ones and, and many, many others. They're the ones that did all the investigative work. I'm just reporting something that was already reported. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm going to go back to this list here and I'm going to, show off any of the other books as well that we haven't got to because we only went to like a handful of books so far mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh and a lot of these are just major keys and very high grade uh, oh yeah absolutely another one signed by stan at 8 8.0 mm -hmm. um that looks like looks like it was witnessed uh signed by gary conway and stan lee that's a i think that's a, what is it the death of gwen stacy right there 121 Oh uh, yes, yeah. I Obviously, so. a bunch of uh, not a bunch. There's a handful of first. Uh, a few. I'm not sure. Not 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 many. The uh, the one ninety four is and the three hundreds, I believe, were the two most slab books. That was, yes, was that on is the, on, the list, on the on the list. And and you see nine point eight, nine point eight, nine point eight. <laughs> for the you know, when I was going through the list, my my first instinct was to look for the books that I have in my personal collection to see if any of them are on the list. Uh, thankfully, yeah. um, none were. Uh, that's yep. great to hear. Uh, and then the next thing I noticed is that how many 194s and 300 9.8s there were, which is a lot. A, a of, lot. a ton of a 238s. Lot. So actually all 194s were 9.8s because they start yeah. with the highest grade and then they go down. So all 194s were 9.8s. And as you can see, you said the line through are the ones that have been received by CDC to... Correct. Look. And we don't know whether, whether or not they were tampered with or not. We don't know. It's just just been received in-house by cgc and what's insane is the amount that are still on the list right like how many people had these books that don't know about this right um, so that's why like the bringing of the awareness to the community has been you know very good um you can't imagine how many you know this obviously tons and tons of collectors out there that don't watch anything on youtube they don't watch ig right. you know reels they don't watch anything so that you know uh, what Mount Nelson talked about in the interview is like they've been reaching out to these other third party companies that, you know, these books may have been purchased from so that they can get the information from these people so that they can actually submit the books to CGC to whether to determine whether or not the books have been tampered with. There is one nine point six ASN 300 and that this interesting that they're at the top because actually I thought it was supposed to be the highest grade first, but um yeah, so he, 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 yeah. he did say, like, he wouldn't mention the third-party companies, but it definitely sounded like Comic Link, Comic Connect, and Heritage. From my yeah, mind. that was one of, the, uh, one of the notes I wrote down that he actually avoided the question by, he didn't want to name names. But, uh, sure. but uh, he's, you know, he's working with, um, you know, several third-party companies. Um, and, uh, you know, and then he also mentioned that 350 books out of the 10 million graded by CGC. Yes, it's minuscule, as he was saying it, but uh, it's still obviously enough to uh, impact the community. Yeah, but, uh, so that's interesting because um, as you and I both own several, several graded books, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard. Like, yeah. personally, I would prefer to buy like a major grail like this already graded. So, you know, the grade, you know what it's worth. Uh, you don't have to worry about whether, oh, should I get this press and it in? You know, worry about it. Like, I would prefer to buy a bigger grail already graded. Now, here's the thing, though. Like, you and me, uh, we both submitted a ton of books, right? Like, we yeah. know the books that we submitted are legit, right? And so it's hard. Like like you said, this is a very, very, very minuscule number of books. It um, yeah, it is. In the grand oh, scheme of things, it's it's very, very small. But it does make you think, man, like, you know, how many of the books have I touched? Or is there really any others in my collection that are not legit? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. There's always that it, concern. It, there is that concern. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yep. My God, we're still on the ASN 300s. <laughs> yeah, I think there was, what, 104, 105, something like that. It was ridiculous. It was uh, nearly a third of all the books on the list. <laughs> That is or uh, the ASM 300 because you know, you know grantly so it's the most graded book on any grading platform you look I at any grading platform it's the top graded book you know it's interesting I, wise 
I thought Karate Kevin owned all the ASM 300s. (laughs) 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 Oh, shoot. We're going to Avengers 1. That's another very high price book. This is probably. Yeah, yeah, several thousand dollars. Probably second or third highest, you know, value book on this list. Yeah, it's up there. Um, you know, in one there's of the questions, a, there's a Catwoman right there. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Yep. One of the questions that I had um, is, what are they going to do about all these people that do not resubmit these books in the CGC? Right. Like, I mean, we can, I oh, okay. Here, we, we, have a, we have a GSX one, Hulk, Hulk 181 as well. Um, yeah. So, what are they going to do about all these books that aren't submitted? Are they just going to be like, well, you know, we tried, or like, how are they? You, it's going to be almost impossible to find all the people that own all these books, right? So yeah, I was going to say, what's the best way to for them to do that? You know? Yeah, you you just don't know because say like for example, I bought a book on Comic Link, mm-hmm. right? And then um, I never knew the book was tampered with. I bought it in good faith, buying it from Comic Link, a well reputable, you know, auction house, mm-hmm. and then I sold it in the second hand privately to a dealer to a friend. Whatever. Mm. And I don't know the book at all, obviously, you know, I don't own the book at all. And I don't, I'm, I'm not in contact with that person. I don't know their, you know, their name, their number, anything like that. So how does that person know unless, you know, they actually go on CGC's website and look up their serial number. Like if they, if they're not even aware of the actual scandal that is going on, how does somebody get in touch with that person? Right, 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 right. Um, you know, what's interesting is, um, There are three first appearances of Thor here, and uh, yep, they've already I'll, been in, you know they've already yeah. been submitted back. Yep. Yeah, the, and, and I try to look at these certs as well, and none of those are coming up. So, so so what he did mention that they were planning on scrubbing the serial numbers if those books were in fact uh, tampered with. So maybe maybe that's what's happening, and, and obviously he said that any of the books because. Uh, Say you own that book, you paid, I don't know, whatever the case may be, $5,000 for that book. Right. You know, and, and uh, now the book is worth $3,500. You're stuck now in a pickle because they said they're only going to provide you current FMV as they should. You know, it, it's the, you know, FMV is FMV at that time when you get the book. And, right. um, you know, say the book's only $3,500. How do you get that book back to that individual, you know, that, that purchased that book? Um, and vice versa, obviously, if you bought that book, say, in 2015, now, obviously, that book is probably worth more money now. Right. You know, now you're in a good situation where, <laughs> you know, you're getting more money more money back for FNV than what it was when you purchased it back then. Um, obviously, there's more, I believe, there's probably going to be more of a situation where there's people who bought books more recently where the FNV has dropped significantly. Yes, and, like, uh, and, and they talked about that in the interview as well. Yeah. And, and yeah. He, there really wasn't an answer to that. No, he, 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 uh, he kind of skipped over that, if, if, you, if you listen to that uh, carefully. And, uh, and uh, you know, the one interesting uh, factor here is those books, like the rare books, you know, ASM 300, it's a common book, even a 9.8. But if... if um, if you had like an ASM two fifty two and a nine eight Mark Jewelers, how do you replace that book? Right. Well, and and there's, you know, well, there's there's not many out there. Well, and have they figured out if they're going to pay these people the FMV of the book? It sounds like they are. Or they're going to pay they, them. Or right. or are they just going to do like they did a Sticky Goose and find another book you. and replace it for them? You know what I mean? That yeah. feels that almost feels like the cheaper option, honestly. Right. And if it's someone yeah. that has a book that we talked about, the FMV has gone down. It almost feels like the better option would be to replace that book than to give them the money, right? Like it's the same thing, essentially, because you're giving them the money to get that book. But I feel mm-hmm. it feels like the better thing to do would be to just replace that book. I don't know, Dave. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, like I said, you know, they're they're gonna give you. FMV on the book, and um, you know, I believe that they would. I don't know if they're going to go out and purchase the book for you and like replace it. You know, like he was saying, they might contact all these different third-party companies 
to right. uh, get replacements for you, but you're not going to be able to replace some of these books. Right. You know, uh, how, how are you going to say if that AF-15, whatever that was, 6-5, signed by Stan Lee, is one of the tampered books, if it's, you know, truly tampered with. Right. Do, that's not an easy book to find. Um, like I said, with the Mark Jewelers book, that's not an easy, there's not many Mark Jewelers books in some of these, no. you know. They're not easy books. Yeah, an ASM Newsstand 9-8, it's an easy book to find. You can find them. They're there. But some of these books are not easy. Uh, so what happens in that situation? And that's when he was saying this is going to be a book by book case, you know, that we're going to have to, you know, discuss with these, uh, you know, 350 books when it comes down to it. Um, so who, who knows uh, what, what you're going to do. But um, reading some of these these uh, comments here. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I did notice that um, when he, uh, what Hunting Comics is saying about with 99 Newsstand. Um, because they didn't, you know, about the uh, the images. They randomly started adding images on certain books out of the blue. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, and it, it's hard because you can't go back, you know, and do that for all the other books you've already graded because they're gone. You know what I mean? I, right. It almost feels yeah. like this was kind of like preemptive. Of, I, I think their thing with that was is that there were some people. Um, I think. MJ Comics was one where they always took a photo of their book before they submitted it and talked about yes. what they and then that's actually very, very good. And they they yeah. come back and it, there would be ticks on there that weren't there before, right? Yeah. And so I feel like that was CGC's cover for it, and maybe they talked to an insurance person or their legal department, and that's probably why they did it. Um, I don't think that that was related to the current situation at all but i could see how someone could come to that conclusion yeah and uh you know that's a good question like like i was saying in the beginning of the uh live stream you know there are some questions some heavy hitting questions that i wish they asked and and uh, yeah. west coast dave Andrews asked i thought he asked the majority of the, the great questions I, I i think to be honest 9.9 .9, kind of like sugar-coated a lot of the questions he was kind of being all friendly and, and willy-nilly with matt nelson which is fine um but he at least to me he kind of was portrayed more as a cgc fanboy more so than um than anything else did you get that picture at all steve you know i i did i did feel that way i also felt like he a lot of his questions he would talk for like three minutes he i felt like he talked a lot more than matt nelson did he, he, he talked, but <laughs> yeah and then eventually would ask a question, right? Yeah. And that's fine. Like, uh, you can, no, that's fine. You, you, yeah, you no, do it no. however you want. That, th those guys broke the broke the thing, so they it's, can do it. It's it's your I, yeah, it's your interview. You do yeah, it however sure. you want. And you know, and you got to if you got that connection, you got to keep that connection. You know, especially with the you know CDC grading company, um, like like uh, like Reggie does. You know, I mean, he went he's been down to Florida many times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I I agree with you. There was some softballs in there. Um, but also, yeah, you, know, was, you don't want to invite someone on there and treat him like crap either. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you know. I, him as well. I do, I do expect their fees to go up to cover this legal yeah. investigation to cover all these books that they're having to give to other people. I expect absolutely. I, I don't know how much. I'm assuming probably like a five dollar increment at some point this year. They're not going to do it right away. Because I'd be bad press on top of bad press, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want bad press. I expect right it away. probably June or July, maybe August. Yeah. Somewhere in the summertime, they are going to announce. Yeah, they don't come. Up to cover and to cover inflation as well, but to mostly, yeah. in my opinion, would be to cover this. It'll be to you know, obviously to cover the investigation. We don't know how long this investigation is going to go on for. Like I said. I still think, and not just me, but many other people think that there's multiple players, and uh, for them to dig deeper into the, you know, into the uh, seller, so to speak, and finding out these other players, you got to do some more investigative work. So, uh, you know, who knows how long this uh, this investigation is going to go on for? If I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with the um, the sports autograph forgery scandal that happened in the early two thousands, um, that was called operation bullpen if you look it up on uh yahoo or google there's a big fbi archives file on the uh 
the autograph forgeries, and the FBI was heavily involved in that in that uh, investigation. And it took them six years to uh, to get that you know information, all the information that they needed to to bust these uh, these individuals. It was uh, pretty wild. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, sports uh, autograph forgery scandal that happened in the early 2000s or late 90s. Basically, in a nutshell, about 75% of autographs from sports athletes were forgered. And, um, and it was from sports cards to oh, no. footballs, to jerseys, you name it. They, they had accumulated, geez, like hundreds and millions of dollars worth of forgery. And um, the, Mar the Marino family, uh, the head guy, Marino, actually served jail time. And uh, there was over 20 people that were charged in the uh, wow. investigation. So uh, I obviously don't expect this to reach anywhere near that, but uh, I best believe that you know these people can be charged if uh, if it, in fact it comes down to that when they when they complete their investigation. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. That's that's, so, that's uh, I do, I do not know about that. Uh, you know, after rambling on it, do expect fee, uh, fees for uh, grading to go up eventually. They also have to pay out, obviously, all these books that were tampered with because they're going to have to pay out for FMB. Right. That obviously comes with cost. And uh, the other thing that he kind of sugarcoated over was, are they going to redesign the cases? And uh, you want to talk about that, Steve? So my thoughts were that he, to answer your question here at Hunting Comics, I, I don't disagree with that whatsoever. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I don't disagree with what you have to say whatsoever. I, I agree with it. But having said that, I, I do think they will do that because of that. They'll, they'll make us pay for it on the top end. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's just the way of life. It's, it does suck. Um, yeah. What was your question again? Oh, uh, the new case. Well, uh, what were your thoughts about his response to uh, is yeah. there plans on doing a recasing, uh, design, what, whatever the case may be? To, to you know, add some added securities to the uh, CGC case. It sounds like that has been discussed. And it also sounds mm -hmm. like he didn't want to talk about it because he yeah. didn't want people to be like, oh my God, we're getting a new case. Have him call in and bug us about it. Um, now, I did find it interesting that he kind of danced around that. He kind of sounded like they were doing it without doing it, but he also, in the same interview, said they are going to do a 9-9 pre-screen. So like, <laughs> yeah, he was on one topic <laughs> that was probably way more important, but then yeah. he talked about the 9.9 .9 pre screen, which uh, it sounded like one of the people on the panel there was pretty excited about. Um, I don't yeah. know. It, it uh, definitely sounds like they're going to do something. I don't think they've figured out what they're going to do yet. And I feel like part of that is their engineers are going to have to come up with a couple different designs because whenever they do, whenever you do, do or change things, you have to go to your engineers and and they're going to come up with probably 10 to 15, 20 different designs, and then they're going to pick out a handful, and then they're actually going to create those, and then they're going to look at those and decide a handful, maybe some tweaks, and then they look at them again before they finally eventually pick one to do. So if they're going to change yeah. the case, I expect it to probably be within a year or so. Um, yeah, and this, and this takes, it takes time. This is not something that's yeah. going to be done in a month. Yeah, yeah there's a whole like, process to this. It sounds like they're spending a ton of manpower and hours, like with the investigation, with, with the yeah. investigation calling these different third-party companies, um, figuring out how they're going to pay for this, contacting the lawyers, insurance, and then they yeah. probably they did probably slip in something to the engineers about that. That is probably on the back burner compared to everything else, but it did sound like at some point that will probably be pushed to the forefront as this investigation, mm -hmm. whenever ends, does end. D did you get that same feeling? Yeah, I, I thought so too. And he, he kind of held that to his sleeve that he didn't want to give up too much information on that. Um, so at least there was definitely a discussion behind the scenes that they're, they're working on something in a preliminary standpoint on working on uh, doing something with the CGC cases. Right, and then uh, he did he did talk over about it. You know, when he did that breaking, oh, we're gonna do uh, nine point nine pre screening, and uh, I was like, oh boy, you know, I thought that was the big uh, the big surprise there during the interview. That that caught me off guard. I didn't expect that at all. 
I, I, I yeah. didn't, that was the one thing that I never w would have even thought about at all. No, that, yeah, that one threw me off. I did know about, he did talk about it very, very briefly, that there is an introduction to uh, pulps, the pulp grading. Um, he talked about that very, very briefly. Um, I am excited for that. And uh, so that's something that they've had already, it's already designed. The case has already been made. It's just a matter of uh, introducing it. Um, so he, you know, that can obviously. You explain, can you explain to everyone what that is that people don't know? Uh, so graded pulps. Pulps have been around pre, you know, the comic book golden age. So like you're talking about books from the 20s, the 30s, thicker books. Um, they're made out of pulp, you know, some of the earliest forms of paper. And uh, they would tell us some, you know, more often the desirable books were like the, um, the HP Lovecraft books, you know, Lobahara, some sci-fi, um, really cool, uh, just really cool stories. And, um, you know, much thicker books there uh, than your traditional comic book, much larger. So this is going to be a completely different case um, size. And uh, I believe, so somebody also mentioned uh, in the, um, in the chat, Oh, hunting comics. Have you guys seen the slab options for manga grading? Yes. So uh, that would also potentially lead into CGC also using a similar case for manga if they wanted to. Um, but they, they pivoted towards pulp before they went into manga because they thought that there was a larger market for pulp um, based off of the sales that pulp have been getting on uh, the Caritage and Comic Link and Comic Connect. Um, and to answer that question, I have seen those cases. Not many people have been talking about the uh, manga grading cases by Beckett. I think they look fantastic. Um, and they have some really cool label designs along with it to go with the, um, your manga that you submit. So uh, I, I thought those look really cool, to be honest. And I might, I might submit a book over there just to see what it looks like in person. So yeah, really cool. I have a couple of questions. questions. I, I, have, I have a couple of questions, and we can get out of here pretty soon because I know it's been almost an hour, and it's pretty late on the East Coast. Um, my question to you is: it, it, We kind of talked about the case, um, and how the engineers are probably going to come up with their design when they're, you know, this whole yep. thing is over with. What would you do to fix the case to make sure this does not happen in the future? To make sure people are buying the book that is actually in the case with the certification number? Would you, what would you do? Or what would you um, ask for if you were, let's say Matt Nelson, and you're asking the engineers to come up with something, what would, how would you do it? So let's be pretty honest and forefront about it in the first place that uh, if somebody wants to break into that case and do anything to it, whether you know, it's switching out books, whether it's tampering, doing anything in general, they're going to do it. You know, if there's a will, there's a way, right? It's at the end of the day, it's a plastic case. You know, it's easy to get into, right? Would you agree? I do agree. Uh, so uh, if somebody creates a new case, there's going to be somebody out there who's going to want to try to crack it and try to get over somebody. It is what it is. Um, Speaking to the specific question on what would I recommend, um, I don't know. You're going to have to completely redesign the case. That's going to be the, the uh, probably the easiest, um, obvious thing to do. Can there be some specific, you know, anti-tampering designs on the inner sleeve um, that is not, you know, easily visible to the naked eye? Is something that they could view? maybe under UV or under um, black light, something that is not regularly detectable, put a specific signature on the, you know, you know how like we have these um, anti-tampering signature, you know, codes on our dollar bills. If you look at the hundred dollar bill, for example, there's a multitude of layers of security. Add some of those securities to the book, add some of the, like to the, to the inner sleeve, add some of those securities to the case. Multitude layers of security, to add assurance that the book is going to be more difficult to tamper with if, in fact, you do decide to crack the case. Yeah, I agree with everything you said there. Uh, I, I feel like, personally, they need to figure out a way. I know it's plastic. People can get into it, like you said. Yeah. They've got to figure out a way. You know when you go to Walmart to go buy, like, a, a video game or an expensive mm -hmm. thing, and it, 
they're this thing that they use to open said. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Well, yep. they, they, I feel like they, there's got to be a way for them to design something that the CGC case will only open that specific way unless it's completely destroyed. And they could say we're not going to take any destroyed cases, right? Unless, sure. it, unless you can certainly tell it's been dropped, right, at a specific mm-hmm. way. Um, but, you know, we, we look at the CBCS case versus the CDC case. It feels like the CBCS case, the new one, uh, is a lot more sturdy. It is. It is. Do, you, um, do you have one? No, I think I do. I, I think you have one. I do have one. Do have one. It, it is it is vastly different in feel, and it looks a little bit more uh, sturdier than the CGC case. But it is um, not the new label, and I'm no, assuming that's fine. it's it's I, the same case. Yeah. It, okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay, give me just yeah, a same exact case, just different label. Because I because I I reholdered some of my books through CBCS just to get the new labels recently. It's the same exact case. It's the exact same case, just a new label. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. I got this probably super cheap, and so that's why I got it. This is the only CBS, CBCS case in my collection. Cool. If you feel this, if you feel this, it feels insanely more secure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Than this, and you can. Can you hear that? Oh yeah, yeah. I can, you can I hear it moving around. Really, yeah. Right? Hear a little bit, yeah. And that's nothing. yeah, it's not moving. Nothing. nothing. Th- this case, the case, we can talk about the label, but the case is significantly better. And I feel mm-hmm. like they're gonna have to talk to they may even have to call CBCS and be like, yo, how'd you guys do that? You know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't think they're gonna. They're not gonna give up their. Uh, probably, their not. probably not. Probably uh, not. Unless it, unless it's considered like a hefty payday. Um, but no. So to answer your question, um, there's got to be a way to make it so it's way more secure, way more like CBC. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. do agree. There's they got to do something on the inner well to make sure because mm-hmm. we know we know that the the book is in an inner well and and then that is inside the actual case. They got to sure. figure out a way to make it so. That inner well um, can only be verified by CDC to make sure, like you said, UV or something else. Yeah, um, just add some hidden securities in there that we're not going to be, you know. And, 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 and they don't have to tell anyone what it is, right? No, they're not going to tell anybody. No. No. They, they, they got to put like something in the back, an in inner well, like a, like a QR code or something, right? And like see yeah. through, right? I don't know. The, the, that's. I feel like you and I have got pretty good. Yeah, that's for them to decide ultimately what they did, what they do with the cases. But well, we could go on. We have plenty of good ideas, and, and and so do the people in the community on how they could revamp their cases and add more security. It's whether or not they choose to do so in the future. So, OTG is saying uh, CGC fanboys remain fanboys. I you know, sure, sure, sure. Like uh, Taylor Swift, you know what I mean? Like. They, they, <laughs> It doesn't matter if she's dating Travis Kelsey or Timothy Chalamet or whoever, you know what I mean? Like, they're going to be fans of her regardless, and it's going to be the same thing for CDC. I've said yeah. at the beginning, I own all but one. Like, all my other books are all CDC. I like CDC. I like their cases uh, for the most part. I like their labels. Uh, I like the consistency. I like their resale value. Uh, I love their customer service. Their customer service is amazing. And I just like them more. I just do. And I've talked about it. I feel like people should trust them still if that is something that they are contemplating. Uh, it is up to each individual person. But I feel like the transparency of CDC um, on top of their customer service um, and my personal like like dealings with CDC on multiple occasions and things that, yes, they have messed up, um, for them to fix them the way they have, and seeing how they have helped other people. I feel like people should trust CDC. I don't know how much money they're spending on this case. It's going to be a lot. And obviously we've talked about how we're eventually probably going to have to end up paying for it. But the fact that they're they're going to do this, it's going to cost them millions of dollars, millions of dollars to get this situation figured out. Um, And they are taking that. 
they, they know it. They, they know it's the right thing to do. They talked about Matt Nelson said uh, this is for the community, and they want to yeah. make sure that the community is involved and the community is taken care of. And I feel like they are doing the right thing. And I always feel like they have done the right thing. We can talk about the price hikes. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. But in terms of customer service, in terms of in terms of doing the right thing, in terms of like the scandal or the acetate gate or anything else. I always feel like in the end, CDC does end up doing the right thing. So Dave, you had different thoughts than me on the Matt Nelson interview. I thought it was great. You were able to find different things that I didn't notice right away. So I wanted to ask you, Dave, um, do you think people should still trust CDC or should they trust CBCS or should they just not grade books? Or what are your thoughts on on that, does this affect your opinion well, of your company? Uh, first off, don't take my recommendation on what you what you should do with your books. It's your books. If you want to keep them raw, great. If you want to grade your own books, great. Uh, choose whatever works for you. Um, I still feel like if I'm going to send books off for grading in my personal books, I still feel comfortable sending my books off to CGC, the CBCS, without any issue whatsoever. Yeah, now going forward, do I have to be a little more cautious, take some pictures beforehand, you know, worry about some quality control coming back? Yeah, I do that when I submit books, um, as you should as well, you know, because of all the horror stories we've heard of books, you know, not being books you get back in return. But um, yeah, I'm not going to, like I said, recommend one or the other because I have, I do both. I have raw books. The vast majority of my collection is raw. I probably only have about 50, 60 graded books, and uh, they're both through CGC and CBCS. I believe in a fair trade market system, and uh, when there's competition, it's good for everybody. So um, that's my thoughts on it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, you know, I am not monetized. I did a whole video on, the, on uh, not being yeah. monetized. Uh, Dave, I don't believe you're monetized either. Um, this is oh. just a topic that you and I talked about doing videos on. Um, yeah. and we this is my only second, second time talking about this scam. I did a short and then this is it. I'm not yeah. one of those people who have been covering it extensively. This will probably be the last they talk about this. I have not personally sold books in a long time, so I'm not a flipper. And I would not consider myself an influencer either. Like if you look at my channel, like I post in the past, I posted a lot more a couple of years ago, but like right now I'm only posting once or twice, maybe three times a week. Uh, yep. And I'm not expecting them to get in you know, a huge numbers at this point. I'm doing it for fun. Um, yeah. So my personal opinion is yes. Like I, I've said how I feel about CDC and people can take it one way or the other. And like Dave said, my personal opinion can be different from yours. You do whatever you think mm -hmm. is best for you. Um, yeah, absolutely. I also and, uh, like, I, Go ahead, like I said, this this video will also be on my channel. And like I said, you know, and like I said, this will be the last I talk about this topic unless something big, you know, comes out of this that we find out that the investigation is closed, the information that came out forth, and that'll be it. But I won't be talking about any brand new updates that come out from this this game. I, I'm not here for the views. I could care less. I'm here about the hobby, talking about the books I buy, and just that's it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I wasn't talking about us. Well, okay, I got you. CDC is good for your own collection. The issue is the secondary market. Until there's a real fix, I won't be buying any slabs for anyone. Okay, I get it. Totally good. Yeah. I feel like we've touched on like almost everything in regards to, you know, just the different okay. scandals, the different issues people have with CDC. Our thoughts on it, uh, the bigger books related to it, the actual seller that it's happening to. Um, yeah. I feel like you've done a pretty good job. Anything else that we should talk about here, uh, Dave? Can we um, briefly talk about, the, uh, this will probably be the end of it, of the 9.9 .9 uh, pre-screen. I know we talked about it briefly, obviously, sure. breaking that he's going to be eventually down the road doing pre-screening for 9.9s. And this will be one of the ways that they, I, I assume they're going to help recoup some of this money from the investigation is, is adding pre-screen 9.9s. Um, whether, you know, I don't know what, what the charge is for pre-screen, five, six bucks, probably seven, eight bucks. I don't know for a current. It's, it's, eight, it's, it's $8. Eight I, assume, 
I assume nine nine I, will probably be more like ten or fifteen. Yeah, I've never done a, a, a nine eight pre screen, um, so I wouldn't know. But I I, fi I figured it was right around that ballpark. But um, that that will be a way for them to uh, recoup some of the money that they've uh, lost. People are going to take that gamble. Oh, do I want to take a, a gamble and crack my nine point eight and see if I can get that nine point nine? Um, and then he briefly talked about the uh, the grading scale, and uh, if you and you know if and he wrote the grading scale for, as far as I'm concerned, uh, from what they were saying. And uh, if you look on their website, their grading scale, uh, which is pretty vague, if you ask me, um, he said that this is per quote that uh, there can be a tick for a nine point nine. Right? You heard that as well. That which I was said by 9.9 .9 newsstand and confirmed by Matt Nelson because he said he does remember saying that on another live stream. So yeah. I find that very interesting. But I also feel you like know, see, he's a head grader, but I don't think he's involved in grading every single book, 85 million different collectibles. No, I, yeah, I, yeah, definitely, I don't see definitely he's not. Involved in every single book being graded. No, you you go on that uh, grading scale on CGC's website. You look up what a ten point oh, a nine point nine, and a nine point eight is. As vague as it is, you look at a nine point nine. What it says: the collectible is nearly indistinguishable from a ten point oh, but will have a very minor manufacturing defect. It will not have any evidence of handling defects. That's it. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm going to read what this person says, and then I'll get my thoughts. 9.9 pre-screen would be terrible for the market, would cause prices to crash further, would also be expensive. 9.9s are worth thousands, so they get higher reject fees and are way higher grading fees at 4%. 9.9 galore. Yeah, um, my thoughts are I don't think that they should do a 9.9 .9 pre-screen. <laughs> I feel it, like honestly, I think it's a money scam. It's oh, an easy way for them to acquire a lot of money in a very short time for that individual who wants to take the risk in submitting their whatever book at a 9.8, hoping to get a 9.9, .9, and then it gets rejected. And uh, then they have to send it back for reslabbing. <laughs> yeah, so, you know? yeah, for sure. Like I, I have 60, 70 graded books right now. I have sent other books in the CDC over the years and sold them. Um, I have never personally, not once in my entire life, owned a 9.9, .9, whether that's no, here. buying it from someone or submitting it. I've never once owned one. And it almost feels like uh, maybe that's good, right? Like 9.9s nine and 10s are supposed to be so rare. But like even yeah. you and me, who's, who's owned, I don't know how many different books you've owned, you know what I mean? But it, I feel like probably coming and going through my collection of easily over 200 slabs. Um, that's maybe not 200, maybe like 150 different slabs that I've bought and sold or whatever, uh, traded, whatever it is. Never once owned a 9.9. .9. Uh, yeah, know, same here. I only know like a handful, a handful of people in the community that have 9.9s. And I feel like that's the way it should be. You know what I mean? Like those are supposed to be insanely collectible. Uh, and so doing a 9.9 .9 pre-screen is probably not the best for mm -hmm. the community. Um, but right. it also, like you said, feels like a big money scale, like scam, like, okay, all right. Because, you know, if we're submitting those books in for 9.9s, you know what that means, right? All these other retailers are going to be submitting loads of books for 9.9s, and they're going to jack up right, the price. Because let's, let's say a variant, they're going to sell for 100 bucks at 9.8. Now they're going to get a nine nine. Now they want four hundred dollars for that, right? And they're yeah. only doing it. And so if it gets rejected, ah, oh, we'll just submit it back in for a nine point eight. No big deal, right? It only costs them ten right. bucks, as opposed to you know the price of so, three hundred bucks. Yes, yeah. so. it's it's a way an easy way for retailers to uh, recoup their initial costs to uh, make these exclusives right off the bat. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's the only people that really benefit is is the retailers because these books are shipped to them. They're flawless before they get sent out to you, the purchaser of the yep. exclusive. If they don't have to set, sell it to you. They can just send it right to CGC and hope they get that 9, 9, or 10. And then they sell it to you for 4, 5, 6x. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I agree. So I, I, 
it sounded like nine nine Newsand was really excited about that. Um, that's cool. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Sounds like he's got a lot of books that might be nine nines. Um, yeah, I don't. I have some books that I, don't want to be nine nine, but most yeah, likely I, I wish him well on that. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> the honest. amount of books that I've submitted, like I just yeah. expect all of them to be nine eights, and I've expected yeah. a nine eight to be nine. Honestly. I feel like a nine eight should be the industry standard, anyways, because like nine nines and comics, yeah, there, like comic books definitely. Yeah, like I mean, what is it like point zero 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 one percent are nine nines or tens, and it almost yeah. feels like those yeah. ones that are nine nines and tens, a different collect grader could say they're a nine eight. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. who knows? In, in a, in a to different answer the question, I think it's a bad idea. So yeah, in a different collectibles market, nine point nines and tens are more and more common. But in the comics, there's just multitude of layers to them that it makes it extremely difficult to get a 9.9 .9 or a 10. Like why I would, own. Go ahead. Why would anyone pay hundreds of dollars more for a comic book supplement in CDC exploit? Yeah, uh, it's their rarity. They, there are a lot of people now that want to own that 9.9 and be like, yo, look at, look at my 9.9. .9. You can't get that. Yeah, I got it. That's, what it you know what I mean? that's ultimately what it comes down to. Yeah. So what are we, we going to say? Like, sorry. Like I... In other collectible markets, um, like I said, comics is not the largest collectible market out there, not by far. Uh, the sports collectible market, the coin collectible market is much larger. Um, it is much more common to get a, uh, an MS-69 or MS-70, which is the equivalent of a 9.9 .9 or a 10.0 in the, the coin market. It's easier to get a near mint or perfect or mint grade because those coins are shipped from the mint to the grading facility uncirculated. Um, sports cards, much easier to get a 9.9 .9 or a 10.0 because it's just a card. There's no extra paper to it, right? It's just one front, one back. Much easier thing to get a, a perfect grade. Comics is much more difficult. And so that's why they do tend to co uh, command a much, much more higher multiple than say a 9.8. And, um, but yeah, that's what it is. It comes down to it's, it's, it's a rarity. Burke is nothing but 9.8, so he's protecting his investment. <laughs> <laughs> that is not on, true. I I, I've got several low grades. My Brave and the Bold 28 is a 2.0 with tape on it. So, there you uh, go. But, no, I, I definitely don't own all 9.8s. I wish I did. Yeah, I got, some, I got some, like, 0.5s and 1.8s downstairs, too. So there you go. I got Back a white it, variety. Uh, yeah, they, they have a company called CBCS. <laughs> yep. Yeah, like it's the uh, the parent company. Yep. Yep. They do comic grading. And they do signature series different. I'm surprised that they still do that. Honestly, after the whole thing where that guy made a whole video about how he learned Sarah Pacelli's. Uh, yeah. And then they're still doing it. I'm surprised. You know, like <laughs> nobody talks about that nowadays. I uh, got brushed on the No, and, and, and but... that guy's from another country. So I wonder how much they could have done anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's all I had to talk about. This. Yeah, that's all I got. That was the last thing I wanted to talk about. Cool, cool, cool. Well, make sure you guys follow Mark Spector Comics on Instagram and YouTube. This video will be posted there as well. Make sure you guys mm -hmm. follow me as well, Burke Family, 54 Comics on Instagram and YouTube as well. I had a great time. Dave, this was yeah, a lot of too. fun. Yeah, uh, a blast. Hopefully next time, Karate Kevin can join us. <laughs> I know it was kind of last minute, but hopefully next time he'll, he'll jump, jump on and talk about this. Uh, if you guys are watching this on the replay, make sure you guys leave a comment on the video. Uh, like it as well, and and uh, we'd love to have some conversations with you guys about this topic, CDC, whether you guys are still trusting them, what do you guys think about this scandal, and anything else as well. Uh, I appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, I'm Steve, and that is Dave, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Oh, wait, I got to play this. <laughs>